right, we're going to streamline this series just a bit. There's a little bit of overlapping information. And instead of loading some of these videos, what I'm going to do is point you to extra resources, uh, extra free resources that you can watch that will go more in depth. Because a lot of times basic functionality is enough to get you started. And then once you're comfortable, you can go through and dig in a little bit on any particular functionality. So for example, you're going to see on my station page on my YouTube channel, there's a playlist section and there's well, all sorts of playlists, but the important ones are the ones that are going to be like Zebras 4R8, what's new? Zebras 2018, Zebras 2019, Zebras 2020, and Zebras 2021, what's new? So this is all free content. You can click on any of these playlists here. You can go through here. You can hit Control F and you can go type in a, a name, Micropoly. Great, here's a whole bunch of Micropoly videos. Or even on the channel itself, you can click this and go fiber mesh and find some fiber mesh uh, videos for you. My air station page isn't going to have that type of functionality, but it might be a little bit easier to navigate. Again, you're going to have 4.8 what's new, 2018 what's new, 2019 what's new, 2020 what's new, and 2021 what's new. You can just click on these, click in the upper right hand corner, and there's the video list, plus some other possible goodies that might be associated. So now let's hop into ZBrush and get started. The first thing we're going to be greeted by is this home page right here. What I like to do is go up here to this gear icon, click on show if news updated, exit out of this, exit out of that, and then that'll only pop up if ZBrush doesn't update as opposed to every time. If you ever want to get that back, you can go up here to this home page right up here in the upper left hand corner and launch it again. Now eventually we're going to be clearing out some of these buttons in our custom UI user interface later on, just because I don't need a quick access to home page. But you can also find that over here under Z plugin, miscellaneous utilities, there's your home page button. The next thing you're going to see is this light box up here. Just like we wouldn't get into uh, navigating menus, you basically can click in this gray area over here to scroll. Same thing in the light box, just click in a gray area and you can go through here and scroll back and forth. It's going to default to the project tab. And in here are Z projects. Next to it is the tool tab. These are Z tools. We're going to get more into what is a Z project, what is a Z tool in later videos, but these are just really handy places to either find some cool demo things like in here, the, for example, the tool is going to have some demo tools you can check out or even in the project, if you scroll back here, here's some cloth, dynamic cloth Z projects you can open that'll walk you through some functionality. And of course, some extra brushes that ZBrush doesn't load into their default brush palette but there's some really cool brushes you can uh, check out in here. And of course, if you want to save custom brushes, you can put your own folders in here. Now I realize I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, we don't even know what a Z brush is. So what am I going to do with all this stuff? Well, I do want to show you if you do want to start, you know, saving your tools or saving your custom brushes, just really quickly where those are is if you click on anything in here, we click on the scales, for example, it's going to tell you, see program files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 2021, or whatever ZBrush version you're using, ZBrushes and scales. So if we navigate to that folder, you're going to see in here is a ZBrushes folder. And there's the ones that ship with ZBrush. And then I have some custom ones up here. I just put an underscore in front of it. You don't have to do that. And then inside of here, you can just put in any of your ZBrushes and they'll pop up here. Now again, this is your light box. You navigate just by clicking through here. And just like the home page, the light box has its own button. It's right here. And if I hover over this, you're going to see show hide light box. And it has a little comma at the end. That's actually a hotkey. So if I roll over any of these things, for example, edit, you're going to see it's going to be edit object T. That's going to mean the hotkey for edit object is T. So same thing with the light box. That's comma key. So you can just hit the comma key on your keyboard and that'll launch and show light box. Now again, when we go through and we clean up our UI, if you already know the hotkey for lightbox, we don't need this in here, so we're going to probably take that lightbox button away. And in fact, if you load up ZBrush and you don't want to see the lightbox pop up every time, you can go in here to Preferences, Lightbox, and you're going to see Open at Launch is turned on by default. So again, if you don't want to see this open every time, just go ahead and turn off Open at Launch, go in here to Config, and say Store Config. Now again, when we get up to setting our own custom UI, custom interface and menus and stuff like that, storing your config is going to be super useful and anytime you make a change in ZBrush that you want to keep in regards to your any customization, then that's the button you're going to want to hit. Now one thing I should mention is that when I hover over this, it's going to give me the name of it and the ho a possible hotkey. You can also hold down control and it'll give you even more information. So same thing over here in edit, edit object T, hold down control, and it'll give you kind of like a built-in help menu for uh, pretty much everything in the ZBrush interface. 
So now that we're semi-acclimated into the ZBrush interface, we already know that we can click a menu up here. So here's your menus right up here. And we've already gone into preferences. We've already opened a sub menu. We went down here and clicked on Lightbox. You're going to see if I click on any other menu, it's going to auto collapse the other menus. You can just hold down Shift if you want to open up multiple menus. And of course, once menus get very long, just like when you're over here touching in this gray area, clicking and dragging up and down, you can also do that in these menus as well. So you can just click and drag in these empty areas and just scroll through menus. And of course, you can turn uh, menus or sub menus down just by clicking on them. So now let's go back into our light box and if you've closed it, just hit the comma key on your keyboard or click this little light box button. And we're going to go over here to the tool menu and let's double click. Uh, these are just demo files, don't worry about those. Uh, let's double click this dog.z tool. So when any time we double click anything in our light box, it'll either load a brush or load an alpha. Or in our case, since we're in the tool palette, it's going to load a tool over here. And again, we're going to get more in depth on what a tool is in ZBrush. But for now, let's hit the comma key. And we have a tool selected. We have a document in the middle of our screen here. We have a weird white box in the left-hand corner. And all we need to do is take this, drag it out on our canvas. So essentially, we have a tool selected. We're going to drag down our canvas. Incidentally, because we have a drag rec stroke selected, that's why it's allowing it to do this. Uh, if we change the stroke for some reason to a dots, or if you're in a bad state and dots is selected and it's doing this, which is kind of cool, uh, just go over here and change it to a drag rec dot or a drag rec stroke, drag it out, and then you'll have your object here. Now, of course, we've already, you know, keep clicking and dragging. This is going to keep dragging multiple instances of that dog. Not really useful. It's kind of neat looking, but what I'm going to do is hit Control N on my keyboard, and that's going to clear my document or my canvas. So now, generally speaking, what we want to do in ZBrush is pull out an object in our scene and then start sculpting on it. In order to do that, we need to go over here and click this Edit button, which again, the hotkey is T on your keyboard. So we'll click Edit, and now we're able to sculpt on this object. And all sculpting in ZBrush is, is basically hovering your cursor over the object and pulling. And because we have the standard brush selected by default, you're basically going to start sculpting on your object. If you just touch and tap in your document over here, you'll start navigating around. We'll get much more in depth in navigation in later videos. But that's the basics. You touch over here in your document, you draw on your object, and you start sculpting. Let's talk a little bit more about these menus. So you're going to see when you drag down this tool on your document and you went into edit mode, all of a sudden you got a lot more options over here. So just like we were talking about earlier, you can go through here, you can hold down shift and you can open up multiple menus. You can click and drag in this gray area to scroll up through and backwards and forwards through these menus here. And you might notice these little arrows right here. That's a divider. So what you can do is you can double click those dividers and that'll open and close those dividers. In fact, you're also going to notice right over here on the left hand side, there's a divider here and even on the bottom, there's a divider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this left hand divider because it's really useful in ZBrush to have all your tool stuff over here and your tools essentially what, I'm, what you're going to be working on during your ZBrush session. So having access to all your tool features is going to be really helpful, but also other things too, like brush settings. So by default, your brush menu is going to be over here on the left hand side. And same rules apply over here. You can click and drag in here, scroll through your menus. You can open up multiple menus by holding down shift and close menus. Now you're also going to notice there's a little white dot next to this brush menu. What that's going to allow you to do, if you just click that, it's going to get rid of that menu. It doesn't delete anything. It's still right here. Uh, and if you want that back, just click on a brush menu, just grab that white dot and just pull it over here into your little divider palette area. Now what I really want to look at is the preferences menu. So I'm going to open up the preferences menu and you're going to see there's a white dot here. I can just click and drag this and now I have multiple menus open. If it's getting a little too cluttered or I don't need the brush menu right now, again just click that white dot. And now we just have our preferences menu over here on the left hand side.